Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. I think we're talking about the week of February 17 uh, this time around. So, look, what we got, the moon will be waning away as the week goes on. So we'll have a little bit less moon later in the week to observe some things. Uh, not a bad week for observing. Toward the end of the week, uh, the evening of the 20th into the morning of the 21st, we're really talking about the morning of the 21st here, uh, the moon rises at about 2, 2.30 uh, in the morning, and it, it's between 40 and 45 percent full, and sitting next to the bright orange star Antares. So that's one pairing of the moon you want to watch for this week, is a, a just less than half full moon waning away, sitting near Antares. Antares is in the heart of Scorpius. We think of this as a summertime constellation. So the fact that we see this region rising at 2.30 in the morning right now tells us we've made the transition uh, to a real spring sky. We're starting to look at a spring sky. We're starting to see uh, what we have going on out there um, that's going to become the summer sky as it rises earlier and earlier each month. Uh, Jupiter and Mars, we've been watching for a while here. Uh, they're both uh, very nearly stationary. We talked about Mars last week. Uh, one week from now, it will be uh, headed back into prograde motion. It will end its retrograde motion. Um, and so these are both uh, tra in transitions. Jupiter's been sitting near the star Tau Tari for a long time. And Mars, as we talked about last week, sits in Gemini. Uh, Iota is the fainter star that's above it, and it's got Wasat and Mepsuta on either side of it. So you see a triangle of stars right there with bright orange uh, Mars right in the middle of that triangle. And the two bright stars, Castor and Pollux, are above there, of course. So you see Castor, Pollux, and Mars make one triangle. And then Mars sits in the triangle of fainter stars, Iota, Mepsuta, and Wasat. Okay, so that's all good stuff. Uh, in the evening sky, if, if the morning sky is telling us summer is coming because we see Scorpius there, the evening sky tells us that winter is departing because we see the great marker of fall, the great square of Pegasus with Andromeda riding off the great square of Pegasus, uh, disappearing into the, the horizon on the southwestern sky uh, as it gets dark. So in the southwest, at dark, as it, just after dark, go outside and check out the Great Square of Pegasus. As always, this is your last chance to get a really good look, not this week, but in the, in the next few weeks. It's the last chance to get a really good look at the, the uh, Andromeda galaxy. You go up two, uh, one, two, and then go that same distance up, and you've got the Andromeda galaxy sitting right there, M31. Uh, go ahead, check it out. It's a naked eye object. You don't need binoculars. You don't need a telescope if it's got, you have dark enough skies. Uh, big, bright galaxy there in the evening sky. Now, Venus is the bright object that's sitting just below the Great Square. So Alekhanev is the star that's closest. So you'll see Venus. Venus is the brightest object in this region of the sky. So you go over, you find Venus shining brightly there in the evening sky. Move up, Algonab is the first star you're gonna find that's, that marks the, the lower left in this uh, great square of Pegasus. And then you can work your way on up to Andromeda. Go, go one, uh, Andromeda looks like uh, a V. You go one, a ladder, you go one rung out on the ladder, two rungs out on the ladder, go from the lower rung to the upper rung, same distance on up there. There's the Andromeda galaxy. So that's what we're doing. So Venus will move a little bit relative to Alcanab this week. It's worth tracking. Uh, but this is telling us, this is, a, this is a fall constellation. We like to look at this in October, right, and September. And so this is on the way out. It is telling us that we're headed towards summer just as surely as Scorpius rising in the east is telling us we're headed uh, toward summer as well. Uh, Venus right now, Venus is great. <laughs> okay, Venus, if the sun is here, and Venus is here, and the Earth is here, then this is the illuminated side of Venus, and we see the dark side of Venus, just like we would see the dark side of the moon. If the moon were right there, the moon, we would call that a new moon, that would be a new Venus. When Venus gets around over here, we won't put it quite behind the sun, we can see the nearly entirely illuminated side of Venus, and that's a nearly full Venus. Right now, Venus is a very thin crescent Venus, uh, where it's, it's some uh, closer to new than it is to full out here. And so Venus is only about 20% full. So it's a nice thing. You got your telescope. If this is the one thing you do here this week, next week with your telescope, go out and check out Venus and enjoy the crescent shape. You might be able to see it with binoculars. That's how thin the crescent is getting here with, with Venus. So Venus is a, a beautiful thin crescent. 
and, and, and only about 20% full right now. So go out, check out that shape. Um, this is, you know, I, I, one of the great, one of the great moments that I've had, educational moments in my life occurred one evening uh, when, when we were, we were working, uh, we were showing stars uh, uh, to, to a community of people and one of the older gentlemen in the community looked at Venus and Venus was in a phase about like this and he looked up and he said, it looks like the moon. <laughs> and you say, yes, it looks like the moon and we can start to talk about geometries and all of these things and how startling it is to see Venus looking like the moon like that. Great time to check it out. Now, one last thing for us this week and the last thing for us is to say, here's Rigel. This, this got messy in a hurry. This is a disaster on the board. But uh, Rigel, the leg stars of... Uh, uh, Orion are here. So Orion is up this direction in this drawing, unrelated to what's up there above the line. The, blind, the line says, let's start anew. Uh, as we drop down below Orion, so here's Orion, and we drop down below Orion, the, the brightest star we're going to come to is going to be uh, the Alpha star, our Neb, in, um, in Lepus, the hair. And so our, our Neb is a bright 2.6 magnitude star. So let's just redraw this over here. There's our Neb. We move out this direction and this direction, uh, about five degrees either direction, and you get the delta star, and you get uh, the the mu. That's the important star. That's what we were looking for. What we wanted to see right there. You get mu. Uh, delta is a star uh, that's you know all of these. Every one of these is a, is a second or third magnitude star. Uh, so we're ranging from about uh, 2.6 at the brightest down to about 3.6 or 3.8 at the faintest. So there, there, there's one magnitude of difference. So you're looking at these second and third magnitude stars. So you've got delta here that is a, a, a sort of second to third magnitude star. Uh, and over here, and we drop down a little bit, and we come to gamma. And gamma is a 3.6, one of the fainter stars in this region, but gamma is a beautiful binary star. Uh, actual binary, fit two stars physically in orbit. You got your telescope out. You're you're enjoying Venus. Uh, slide over to the west a little bit and to the east, excuse me, a little bit, and check out Gamma uh, Leporis. We would say the Gamma star in Lepus, the the hair. It's got a 3.6 magnitude star and a much fainter 6.2 magnitude star. They're separated by 95 arc seconds. Really easy to separate. Any any eyepiece you have in your telescope is going to show this as a binary, and they have a nice color contrast. Some people disagree about what those colors look like, but sort of yellow and orange, I would say those two stars look like in there. So give that a try to check out this, this binary star that is gamma. As we go the other direction in Lepus, we will go about five degrees out. Remember, fist and arms, arms length is about 10 degrees, so about half a fist width out. The other way, you get to uh, mu, a 2.8 magnitude star, and mu, if this is your challenge object of the week, you've got your telescope out, you've looked at Venus, uh, you've looked at this binary star gamma, uh, mu, just half a degree above mu, is the galaxy NGC 1832. So you've got NGC 1832, is a very faint, tough galaxy to see, can you find it? It's a, it's a barred spiral galaxy, they're called, it's a spiral galaxy uh, that, 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 that sits... We talked about the edge on, face on somewhat there before. It sits more or less face on, so it's kind of a faint object uh, that you can see uh, sitting again just half a degree. Uh, your finger at arm's length is about one degree, so just barely above. You've got a, your telescope out on a low power eyepiece, which is what you're going to want, low magnification. You can get um, you in one edge of the field of view, and you shouldn't have any trouble getting NGC 1832 in the other edge of it. Uh, the field of view. So that helps you to try to find it, to scan around uh, Mu uh, Leporis. So what we've got there, a uh, Nihal is a 2.8 magnitude star that sits down there. And then uh, below Nihal, so you drop about three degrees from our Neb. We didn't write that back down. Down to Nihal. So you go about three degrees and then you drop another four degrees on down straight on down, and you've got a globular cluster M79. So you've got a nice globular star cluster to see as well. So we've got a lot of fun telescopic things to look at. If you've got a small telescope uh, to see the globular star cluster M79, the, the really pretty uh, binary star Gamma Leporis, and the really challenging galaxy NGC 1832 in this region. And that's all in addition to Mars and Jupiter and Terry's and the Moon and Venus sitting 
uh, below the great square of Pegasus, which we always like to use uh, to guide our way to the Andromeda Galaxy to get a look. And that's what we got this week. As always, everybody, thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great week ahead.